Well, good morning, friends. Welcome to Active Self Protection Extra here again with defense attorney extraordinaire, Tim Forshi of Forshi Law. You should go check him out as well. Today's video, we had a recent one on the channel of a guy who ends up drawing a gun and shooting a guy who sucker punched him. And I wanna ask the guy who has been the judge, he's played you know, the, the umpire on this stuff, been the prosecuting attorney, been the defense attorney, like, at what point does the threat end? Let's talk about it. Firearms Legal Protection is who I trust to help me after a use of force incident. If you're a Firearms Legal Protection member, you can attend our monthly active self-protection training seminars for free. Check out all they offer to their members at the link below. I said in my analysis of that one that the, the danger had passed and, and that he, you know, the cops were looking for him for a reason. Right. And, and not to pat him on the back for doing a good job defending his life. No, he's going to get public housing, I think. Yeah. <laughs> public housing? <laughs> Three hots and a cop exactly. for the foreseeable future. Uh, the queen of cell block C, as it were. So and, and go watch the video, right? Link's in the description. And, and, you know, the guy, we don't know what their relationship was because obviously they haven't caught the guy. Right. Guy just, I mean, just drills him in the side of the head. And it's one of those weird times, Tim. Let's talk about this first that I kind of feel like we hear comments on the channel pretty regularly. Well, you know, people die of getting punched all the time. Yeah. And, and while that's true, the, the law doesn't generally consider a punch a use of deadly force. Mm -hmm. But I kind of feel like sucker punching somebody in the side of the head moves that up a bit. Thoughts? Absolutely. I mean, that, uh, again, it doesn't have to be fatal. It has to be debilitating. It has to be something that could be fatal. It could cause a permanent injury. Could that have caused blindness? Could that have caused a skull fracture that caused brain damage, even if it didn't cause death? And the answer is, of course, yes, absolutely. In fact, I was pretty surprised the guy got up. It looked like that punch connected completely well. Yeah. And as you know, I mean, you're a martial artist way more than I'll ever be. And it seemed to me that that was a punch that I don't know that I'd have got up from. So it, I got to give him some kudos on that. The guy can take a punch. Yeah, he's definitely got a chin. <laughs> yeah. And so there is a difference, you know, when we say, okay, so a punch can is not normally deadly. Correct. Two, two you know, kind of relatively physically equal yeah. guys square up in a, in a, you know, a mutual combat and start throwing punches at each other, well, that's not deadly force. I mean, you know, mixed martial arts and boxing and One stuff. One thing I always noticed from, uh, not only from being an attorney and from working on this stuff from what actually happens on the street, but from when I was a bouncer, when I was in college and law school, I was a bouncer. And, you know, the Hollywood version of a fight just it's, doesn't ever happen. I mean, two guys standing there just jacking each other in the face and going back and forth, and maybe there's a little blood that yeah, appears on a lip. And like, you know, two, three good punches to the face in any fight I've ever seen is over. That's over. all there is to it. And so, um, if, if the guy, let's say the guy had followed the guy to the ground and had, had been preparing to deliver another punch at that point, I would say, I, I think he's probably reasonably in fear for his life or a debilitating permanent injury. So. Well, and, and I mean, even if, okay, so he takes this big sucker punch mm -hmm. and turns as he's getting up and draws the gun because, man, that guy just, just well, about put me in the hospital and almost knocked me out. Right. In other words, you're saying, had it been that way. Yeah, had yeah, it been yeah, that yeah, way, uh -huh. I think I think we're probably talking about a very different Yeah, and I issue. think that certainly if he'd drawn the gun to stop the fight and not fired, I would say completely defensible, appropriate, good job, way to handle it. And and again, having gotten punched in the head that hard, what's one of the first things that goes out of your, oh, your judgment? Yeah. Your, your consciousness, your, your ability to actually think rationally is one of the first things to bleed out of your ears. So. That's, that's a tough call, expecting him to do that. But. So if I'm his defense attorney, which uh -huh. I'm not because I'm not an attorney and I'm not going to law school, uh, but that's going to be one of my biggest arguments is my client. I, I think has, that's the only argument you've got, but i got to tell you, I think it's 99% going to lose yeah. it, as it should. Because, well, the, again, what you pointed out was the, the delay. He, was, he recovered, he got up, he dusted himself off, he walked to the door, he turned, he drew. Then he had the presence of mind to chamber around. I'm sure you noticed. Yeah, that. yeah. He was carrying without the chamber lo loaded. And he had I mean, so it wasn't even like he was panicking and his hand was shaking and he, and he pulled the trigger and right. realized he had, I mean, he was, he was had the, of the presence of mind to work the slide, to work the, the manual arms. Uh, I think the guy's going to prison. Yeah. So oh, oh, the problem here in self defense law, and but I don't think it's solvable, is that where's the delineating marker? Where's it, the it, is, it is resolvable. It's a very easy answer and it's up to the jury. Okay. That's the answer. Right. So, so 12 people that you won't meet for 18 months, yeah. uh, here's your coin flip. So there you go. Well, and, and okay, so at the end of the day, the jury asks is what you did reasonable. Right. I, I, above and beyond any other thing, right? right? So the law is simply boundaries around reasonable mm -hmm. and, and in a criminal case for sure. Mm -hmm. And so you've got boundaries around reasonable, and, and but every community is going to interpret that a little differently. And that's what you see when you say boundaries. They're, they're very, very porous boundaries. If you think our southern border is porous, yeah. Uh, how, how you define boundary. I always tell people that there's very, very few black and white answers in the law 
almost everything is amorphous and gray. Mm. And the border around the reasonable man standard is gray smoke with wind blowing. I mean, it's just always yeah. changes by I mean, I've seen jurisdiction. It changes by, by who's in office. It changes by what was on, you know, who watched the video on YouTube that morning. I mean, it's just impossible to say that's, that's a fence. But I think there's kind of some generally agreed upon standards. Although I, I know of a county in Georgia that acquitted a guy who I would have said murdered somebody under the defense of he needed killing. Yeah, well, they, they all, the old that, bastard needed killing. Yeah, defense. it really yeah, was. Yeah, and it's very popular in Texas, they say. In Texas so, yeah, in some yeah. parts. So, so like, okay, um, all right, I gotcha. But at the same time, like, that doesn't seem super reasonable to me. But it... I, so to me, it goes back again to the, can I shoot somebody? Should I shoot somebody? Must I shoot exactly. somebody? I love that, that, that statement, that analogy is perfect. Because if I have to, otherwise I'm going to the hospital or the right. morgue, I'm, I'm certainly okay. Well, I should be okay legally. The Rittenhouse case shows us we in, can still be punished with the process. Correct, yeah. You know, eventually he's acquitted, uh, but you know, cost him the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but he had to do it in the moment yeah, because otherwise he didn't have the rest of his life to have. People don't realize if, if you really truly have to do it, then all those consequences are going to be what they are. This okay. If it's because if you if you are concerned enough about the consequences to not do it, then you didn't have to do it. Yeah, yeah, very true. So so I can't say it enough. To me, at the end of the day, be a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent person. Works to live by. Uh, and and if we do that, that uh, we've been working pretty hard to popularize that kind of you know mantra, yeah, right? Can leader. I be a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent person? And then you don't have to worry about this stuff. What that guy did to me. None of those things. Well, he violated a bunch of John Farnham's rules. He was doing stupid stuff with stupid people in a stupid place. In a stupid place and all those things. So, hey guys, I wish I could give you a better answer in terms of here's a bright line when and when not, but the, the, the reality is it's not how it is. I, the only bright line for me is if you can avoid it, which you just basically yeah. said, avoid it. Avoid it, yeah. I think that's where he's gonna have his biggest problem is the preclusion issue of you, you were out the door already. You were walking out, exactly. Even in a stand your ground state, the, the, the jury is going to look at that and think, why didn't you just continue walking? Right. You don't have to retreat, but you had chosen to right. retreat and you were retreating successfully. And, and then you, instead of taking the win and getting away from the guy and maybe calling the cops and saying, hey, this guy sucker yeah. punched me in the face. I want him charged with aggravated assault. Instead, you become the offender. It's an Inigo Montoya case. You it's a vengeance case. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, dated pop culture reference. <laughs> Love that. Tim, appreciate the time, man. Always, buddy. Thanks.